All right, folks, welcome back, and we get to have some fun. We get to talk about some fun pop culture stuff right up my alley. It's uh, one of the great shows, superhero shows there on the CW, Black Lightning, and an actress who's really making a name of herself uh, as one of the bad guys, uh, well, bad ladies on uh, Evil Sociopath. I'm not even sure how we describe your character, Jennifer, but Jennifer Riker's with us. We'll talk about that and some of our other projects, and thanks so much for joining us on the show. Of course, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So, all right. So, is, what's the appropriate adjective to describe Doctor Jace? I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I mean, characters that come out of the comic book and now they have their incarnations, and we don't really know all of the story yet, and that kind of thing. How, how do you see her and her role in all of this? Well, she's very much uh, a villain. Um, at first, when she's introduced, um, there's no question of that right off the bat, and uh, she's in jail, and um, Agent Odell has foisted me upon Lynn, the character, um, one of the leads, obviously, uh, to help conduct um, science experiments to uh, help with the green light pod kids. But I would just call her a sociopathic scientist, basically. Mm -hmm. She's uh, one of three in the world who can do what she does, computational scientists. And, um, She's very good at what she does, and she's ruthless because she'll, at any cost, uh, do her job. Joining the show after such a successful season one, what was it like uh, getting to know the cast? And obviously you work a lot, a lot with uh, Christine Adams on screen and some of that. Talk a little bit about that experience. Well, first of all, I should say that I'm in absolute heaven playing Dr. J. It's still... Uh, <laughs> It's a real dream for me. Uh, as you might know, um, you tend to get pigeonholed with roles that you've played before. Um, I tend to play a lot of white-collar, uh, powerful, thinking man, woman, you know, uh, the ultimate pantsuit. So it was not, it's either that, actually, or, uh, or I've died about six times. On you're saying, aren't you, you know, you're end up on a gurney or uh, covered in a drape and uh, on a sidewalk or something, right? Uh. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's funny because I, I originally went to Los Angeles to do comedy. Uh, you know, my, <laughs> I'll get back to your question in one second, but this is funny. I, uh, my, my heroes were, you know, Gilda Radner and, 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 uh, and Lucille Ball and Carol Burnett as a child. And that's what made me even want to be an actress. And uh, it's funny, oddly enough, the industry doesn't see me as comedic, uh, I guess physically. I, I'm, you know, I guess I look more dramatic. But all I was getting was these death parts. And so I was going to create a death reel uh, and um, just have all, like, shots of me falling dead. And, and, uh, and then maybe I was going to send that out to the industry professionals and say, this industry is killing me. Dead. That's, 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 such yeah. a, that's such a twist. That's a, I want to be a comedian. Here's my death reel. Yeah, I love it. That's great. And, <laughs> yeah. But but meanwhile, I'm going to play a sociopath scientist on a CW's hit series, a superhero show. So, by the way, you can watch that too. Yes, I get to live. I live. I don't die. Yes, uh, keep keep going. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm working with uh, an amazing cast. Christine is actually teaching me so much. I mean, it's... It's a real master class on set. And um, I'm, you know, finding her sea legs now. I've done about eight episodes, so about half of the season. And, uh, I, you know, I can't give away too much, but um, there was a little lap, there's a little rest between my next episode. And so I've noticed that the chatter around Dr. Jace has quieted down. But that's, that's exciting for me because it's, it's going to be so worth the wait. When she comes back. Mm -hmm. Because she'll be back. Uh, when you when you were you know you when you were cast did they did they just come at you with just their CW version or did you actually have some of the comic book backstory material and that kind of thing too to kind of have you get a, a better scope of the character and its origins and that kind of thing? Yeah, not at all. I had to do the research myself to even uh, you know fully immerse myself in, in who she was, but that's not at all really um, presented. Uh, it's the CW version. Um, Dr. Jace is originally part of the Outsiders, and there's a whole backstory about her uh, being um, de defected from uh, Markovia, the country of Markovia, 
by Agent Odell. He helped uh, bring her over to the States to help with the science of the pod kids. But she was already in Markovia making these metahumans and working for the king of Markovia and uh, and so that's the research that I did, but that's not really that's not really spoken about. Um, I just sort of listened to what the writers were were writing and uh, learned from them. Jennifer Riker, she's talking to us about Black Lightning. She has a, a great role as Dr. J is playing uh, one of the evil scientists on the show that's been added in season two. It really mm-hmm. adds a nice. Uh, flavor to the show really kind of hopefully is a character that could not only survive season two but has a long lasting uh, uh, role in uh, Black Lightning's future and future seasons as well and it's great to get a chance to talk to her about that and you know Jennifer you mentioned your your desire to be in a comedy and then having death roles and that kind of, but you've been in some pretty high profile shows like a lot of folks probably know you from House of Cards may know you from Walking Dead and those kind of things speak a little bit first about House of Cards I mean obviously it was such a high-profile show. Got off to this incredible, uh, like a steam train, things like that. What was it like coming into that environment and, and joining that team? Uh, another thrill for me. Uh, genuinely, up to that point, before Dr. Jace, one of the most exciting uh, sets to be on. Uh, I was with obviously powerhouse actors, and um, uh, Robin Wright. I. I I feel that I willed that role to happen, and I, I know that might sound hokey, but um, I don't mean that in a woo-woo kind of way. I'm very spiritual, and I just set the intention. Uh, even when I got new headshots, I had waxed my hair off, and I cut my hair into very severe pixie, much emulated from Robin Wright's character, uh, of Claire. And uh, as I stood taking the headshots, I literally was thinking Claire lines. I mean, I so love that role, and... Um, you know, she's brilliant. Yeah, it's and a fa- just, fantastic I historic role. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And, uh, of course, the day I got to work, um, I was on set with uh, uh, two unbelievable heavyweights in the industry. And um, uh, it's funny, we all come from the same training. And so I was just, uh, you know... Um, Surprisingly, at home, um, you know, I traveled up to Baltimore, and um, everybody made me feel like family on set. I was working with a wonderful director, Agnes Gaia Holland, and uh, she was just um, very sweet to let me to let me collaborate. Now, of course, I didn't really understand too much of the backstory of my character. They kind of throw you into these settings, so it's it's left up to you to you know make yourself it in mm-hmm. and uh, create a backstory for yourself if you have to, a relationship prior to what has ever been written about the character. Right, right. Uh, Speak a little bit, because um, obviously, you know, you talked about your, your background and your what got you into filmmaking and then, of course, these incredible opportunities now that have kind of unpacked themselves over the last uh, couple of years and with this incredible uh, place where your career is right now. And, and yet, there's yet another project. when. Ellen DeGeneres has to be this, this you know, modern-day Carol Burnett, right? I mean, maybe she's not as high-profile having a regular show in the same arena, exactly, because it is more talk show-based, but she's so influential, and, and you're able to be a part of one of the things that she's producing on Nancy Drew and The Hidden Staircase. Talk about getting that role, and did you get a chance to spend time with her, and, and how is all of that kind of uh, unfolding for you? Oh, no, I wish I had a fun Ellen story to tell you, but uh, sadly, she was not on set. I, um as producer, I don't know how involved physically she got, with the right. project, but she certainly lent uh, her name to the project. And, of course, um, you know, we had uh, Kat Shea as, as the director, and she's really good at working with actors. Uh, she, she, she was very instrumental in creating um, chemistry between the younger actors and myself. Uh, she did a lot of exercises when we were not filming. We did a lot of games and improv to, uh, to help settle everybody and get us in the same flow. And that was a real treat. Um, I don't work with a lot of directors who do that. And, set. and I got to work with some um, you know, regularly working young actors. And uh, I don't remember. I just did an audition and sort of booked it. Um, sometimes you have callbacks. Sometimes you have to read in the room with the producers. Sometimes you go to network, and that could take 
five or six iterations. But for this one, I just sort of booked it, and she's a zany, drunk motel owner that uh, Nancy Drew and, and her uh, cohort come into and sort of, uh, you know, zany, zaniness into. Um, it's a fun supporting role and, uh, you know, very exciting to, to have booked that um, in the same time that I was working on Black Lightning. That's great. It's a great time for you, and it's a great time to get to know about you and your career and, the, and these incredible roles, folks. And, and Jennifer Riker sp speaking with us about uh, CW's Black Lightning and some of other roles. That one is Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. And yeah, there's another film coming out next year with an actor that you guys all know. Uh, Dave Bautista is part of the Guardian of the Galaxy and the Marvel Universe, and he's got a, a leading role in a film called uh, – Stuber, right? Is that how you say it, right? It's based on an Uber driver, right. night yeah. gone right, right? So it's Stuber. And you get to play a, an art collector in that film. And I don't know if you got to work with Dave much or, or uh, Mir Servino or anyone like that. But it, it's great to see, you know, a big project like that come your way as well. Uh, undoubtedly. Uh, this all kind of went down in a matter of a month. It was just sort of... That's like, awesome. The, the gods were just shining down because I just had, uh, you know, work the guest work. And... Um, when it rains, it pours, both good and bad. But uh, when it rains, it pours, and I'm just riding that wave right now. And I'm very grateful for all the work and the timing of the work and uh, the fact that I get to work with such talented directors. Uh, on Black Lightning, we have uh, many, many guest directors. I just worked with Robert Townsend, and that was another yeah. Wow, that's great. Um, you know, some real heavy hitter directors that I just, you know, some shows have one director or just maybe a couple, but this one I have had a new one every episode. And uh, they all have their own styles, and um, that that in and of itself is, is you know, a, a master class. It's a testament to the show and how well it's sort of thought through and planned out because you don't get that roller coaster ride effect. You get something that's very well thread together and connected. And it's good to know the behind the scenes, that's good for you guys as well to not only get different perspectives, but to have something that gives you a, a consistent foundation to jump off of. Correct. Right. And the writers are just um, magnificent. Uh, it's, it's so much fun to get the new script and see where I'm going to be taken. Well, I'll give you a chance to throw out a fun story or something you could share with us. Obviously, you know, you mentioned your your death resume, which is a which is a great way of explaining it, by the way. But you you do you you've had a, a wonderful opportunity to appear on a lot of different shows from Nashville to Numbers, Castle, uh, obviously uh, Criminal Minds, and all those kinds of. Things. Is there something that stands out to you, or something you'd just love to have? you know, share and be able to make sure that people know that. <laughs> Cause, because it's fun for folks, I think, to get more connected to these shows and the legacy of these shows when they kind of know more of the backstories and those kinds of funny things. You know, um, everybody who works on the show um, uh, is obviously um, one, one piece of the machine. And I know that uh, the stunt people, um, you know, live for these stunts. And they like to, um, you know, uh, well, first of all, they have to wear sort of the same outfit and kind of make themselves out to be your doppelganger. Mm -hmm. um, on numbers, uh, it was the first time I was ever um, going to be doing a stunt, and I didn't, I didn't know that somebody was there in, a, in the same dress and ready to go to thrust herself down the staircase. But for me, that was that was part of the the, the reward of winning that role, and I was very much looking forward to it. So I was kind of disappointed when I found out that somebody else would be doing it. And uh, much to her disappointment, I was able to convince the director, who uh, was Jake Gyllenhaal's father, Stephen Gyllenhaal, very talented director, to let me do it myself. And uh, I didn't mean to put the girl out of her daily employment, but I was thrilled to try stunts. And uh, I had to wear squids, which are the blood packs. Yeah, blood uh, packs, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I had about I had about three of those hooked up to my body, and uh, I had the 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 generator, the the machinery was sort of in my crotch at my thigh, hidden underneath the dress, and uh, somebody obviously maneuvering uh, the button to explode the squid through the dress as I got shot and had to throw myself up a staircase. Actually, I'm running to get away as I'm being shot, and uh, I mean I think I sold it. It was incredibly fun, but. Um, I'm right now in Black Lightning having the second time ever getting to do a couple of my own little um, 
uh, you know, I had in the episode, the third one I appeared in, I had a smackdown. Just great stuff. Great stuff, folks. Jennifer Riker. Uh, make sure you're catching uh, Black Lightning on CW. It airs on Tuesday nights at 9. Uh, and expect a lot more Black Lightning. It's a great show. I expect CW to renew it and continue on the legacy of the CW superhero universes and see more of that expand. It's great to see some of these great roles come to life, and uh, Jennifer's been blessed to be able to be part of that. And you mark your calendar. Obviously, Nancy Drew in The Hidden Staircase, and obviously Stuber next year, 2019. Dave Batista, Mir Savino, and others get to see uh, Jennifer in that role as well. Great to have you with us. Great to get to know you a lot better, Jennifer. Thank you again for your time.